Hello there, I'm Timon. You might already know me from Premiere Basics, and if you don't, it's nice to meet you. Editing videos in DaVinci Resolve can feel overwhelming, especially if it's the first time you open the software. There is just so much going on and you don't know where to begin. Well, don't worry. After watching this video, you will know how to confidently edit your videos. So let's open up DaVinci Resolve. The first thing you will see is this window where you can create a new project. Right here, you can see all my projects. You probably don't have one yet. So to create one, click on new project. Now give your project a name. I will call mine my first edit or something. We're gonna skip media location for now and then click on create. There you go, you're in DaVinci Resolve. Overwhelming, right? No worries, I'm gonna guide you through this step by step. Now at the bottom, you can see all these different pages. They all have their own purpose and they are in this specific order for a reason. Let's do a quick overview. The first page is the media page. This one is meant to import your media like video, music, sound effects and so on. Now the second pages are the cut and edit page. This is where you will edit and build your videos. The next page is called Fusion. This is meant for visual effects and motion graphics. The color page is meant for color grading and fair light for audio processing. Now these pages are all very advanced so we're not getting into them in this video. The last page is the deliver page. We're gonna use that to export or save our video. So in this tutorial we're mainly focusing on learning how to edit a video. Let's start at the beginning, the media page. So first of all in Resolve you you have these panels in every page that you can open up and close by clicking these buttons. For example, the media storage panel, the audio panel, the inspector panel. Now we don't really need the audio and the inspector panel, so we can close them up for now. The only thing we need now is the media storage panel. And here we can browse footage on your computer or external hard drives. Here I have a folder prepared with random footage and some clips I found on Storyblocks. Alright, so right here you can see everything that's in the folder. Now this footage is not in my Resolve project yet. I'm just browsing it. It's like I'm taking a look at them. I don't really know if I'm gonna use them yet. You can preview your videos by hovering your cursor over them and then you'll see them in the source viewer. Now if you decide to use this video in your project, all you have to do is click it and then drag it into the media pool. Let's drag everything in here. Now that it's in here, it's actually in our project. We can use this now to edit. But before we do that, we're gonna organize the footage first. Because, I mean, the media pool looks messy. Right click in the media pool and choose new bin. This will create an empty folder that you can name. For example, my videos. I created another one for my music tracks. There we go. You can open them up by double clicking them like this. And if you wanna go back to all your folders, just click on master and here you can see all the bins you created very easy if you don't see your bins by the way they might be hidden so to show them again just click this little square button now we're gonna start editing but before we do that we gotta make sure our project settings are set up correctly to do this click on the little gear wheel icon at the bottom right this will open up the project settings today we'll only need the master settings let's take a look at two important things resolution and frame rate every video has a resolution and a frame rate. Resolution is the size of your video measured in pixels. It decides how sharp and detailed the footage will look. The most common one for YouTube is Full HD or 1920 by 1080 pixels. The second important setting is frame rate or FPS. This stands for frames per second. This means how many images or frames are shown in each second. For YouTube or social media, 30 FPS is perfect. We're not going into too much detail. Now we have everything set up, so let's click on save and let's start editing. We're going straight to the edit page. We're skipping the cut page today. It's used to cut clips, but you can do the same in the edit page. And in my opinion, that's just way more efficient. All right, in the top left corner, you can see the media pool. And here you can find all the files we selected in the media page. Next to the media pool, we have the source viewer. As you already know, in here, you can preview your videos from the media pool. At the bottom, you can see the timeline. There's nothing in there yet, but in here, we will edit our video. To start, just drag in one of your clips into the timeline. As you can see, this created a video and an audio track. Now, to play back this video, just hit the space bar and you will see the video playing back in the timeline viewer on the top right. You can move these clips around if you like. You can
can move it up or down, or you can remove them by pressing the backspace key on your keyboard. Now, as you can see, if you move around your video, the audio is following it. But what if I don't want the audio? If you delete it, both the audio and video will be gone. So to make sure that doesn't happen, hold down Alt on your keyboard or Option on a Mac and then select the audio only and hit the backspace key. There you go. Now these clips can also be made shorter. If you go to the edge of the clip, you can actually click and drag them to trim away parts of it. You can do this on both sides of the clip, by the way. Now imagine I want to put a video right here in the middle. We can't do that unless we cut it in two pieces. To do that, head over to the toolbar and select the razor tool. Now you can add a cut in your clip. To drag these parts apart from each other, go to the toolbar again and switch back to the selection tool. You can now just click them and drag them apart. Now you can drag your other video in between them. Very nice. All right, now I gotta say, I'm very proud that you've made it so far into the video. That means you actually love editing videos. And that's exactly why I created a DaVinci Resolve 20 beginners course, especially for you. I know that Resolve can look intimidating, but after taking this course, you will be confidently making videos. We'll go through every page step by step. You'll learn to create some cool effects, cinematic transitions, smooth title animations, and you'll master the color page to make your videos look stunning. You will even learn to work with audio and so much more. By the end of this course, your videos will look professional. And yes, you can follow along with the free version of DaVinci Resolve, no problem. Plus, you can download all my project files and follow along with me with every click I make. Now, because I love you guys so much, the first 50 people using the code FIRST will get 50% off. So, head over to the first link in the description down below to get started with editing videos right away. All right, now let's get back to Resolve. Okay, so another way to split your clip is by placing the play at where you want to cut the clip and then hitting Ctrl plus Backspace on your keyboard. There you go. Now, let's say I want to remove this space in between these clips. I can, of course, select all my clips and snap them against it, but you can also simply select the empty part and hit Backspace. That will do the same, just a lot quicker. Now, the next thing you're going to learn is very important for every video editor. So, I have this short recording of me where I have a lot of bad takes and breaths that need to be cut away. To do that, we can of course split the clip a few times, delete the bad parts and then snap everything together. But there's a much more efficient way to do this. And that's by using the ripple delete start to play it and ripple delete end to play it shortcuts. Let me show you what they do. The delete start to play at will remove everything from the last cut we made to the play at. So if I hit the delete start to play at shortcut, this part will be removed. So let's hit control plus shift plus left bracket. As you can see, it's gone and everything on the right side of the playhead is now snapped against your first cut. This is very efficient because now you can continue splitting your clip, moving forward and hitting the shortcut again. But there's actually a similar shortcut that works the other way around. Let's say I want to remove everything from the end of this clip to the playhead. Then hit Ctrl plus Shift plus right bracket. And now everything from my playhead until the next cut is removed. But come on, these shortcuts are stupid. I'm hurting my fingers by even trying these. So let's change them. To change the shortcuts, head over to the DaVinci Resolve menu on top. In here, go to Keyboard Customization. In the search bar, type in Start to Playhead. Now remove this difficult shortcut and replace it with Q. If you get this override message, just click Assign. Then click the yellow warning sign, go to the left list and click the overlapping shortcut. And then remove it in the right panel. Okay, next type in End to Playhead. This time, remove the shortcut again and set it to X. I also changed the split clip shortcuts from Ctrl backslash to C. Much easier to edit this way. Now, let's practice with our new shortcuts. So, to set a cut, hit C. Very easy. Then to delete everything from the playhead until the last cut, hit Q. And then to delete everything from the playhead until the next cut, hit X. This way you can create a very quick workflow. You see, trimming clips will go so much faster. Now let's create a fresh empty timeline by going into the media pool, right clicking, then going to create new timeline. Let's call it practice editing or something. Then click create. There we go. Now let's drag in some of the other videos. You may notice that you can also drag clips on top of each other that will create a second video track. Also important to know if you drag a clip on top of another one, you can't see what's underneath anymore. So if we play this video back, you can clearly see that once the play it reaches the clip of the second video track, the video underneath it is not visible anymore. That's important to understand. 
Now that you know that, we're gonna do some reframing. For example, I have this clip right here. Now I want the subject to be in the middle. To do that, make sure the video is selected and head over to the inspector panel on top. Again, just make it visible by clicking it. In the video tab, you'll have some basic controls and settings you can use on your selected clip in the timeline. Now we're gonna use the position properties in the transform tab to move your video around. As you can see, this will introduce black bars. To get rid of them, simply scale up your video by increasing the zoom property. I actually use this a lot in my own videos. For example, right now to hide the cut I just made. Next we're gonna add some transitions. This is an example of a transition. The easiest way to apply a transition is to right click in between two clips and choose one of these. It doesn't matter which one you pick because you can adjust the length of the transition anyway. Now we have a simple cross dissolve transition. Now if you head over to the effects panel on top you will see the toolbox. And here you have different types of effects and transitions. Under video transitions you'll find tons of awesome ones. To preview them hover your cursor over the transition and then you can see it in the viewer. To actually apply it to your clips click it and drag it in between two videos. Again you can drag the sides of the transition to make it longer or shorter. There you go that looks very cool. Now if you select the transition you can go to the inspector panel and under the transition tab you find some cool settings to mess around with. Definitely do that. Now let's take a look at some cool effects in here. When you hover with your cursor on an effect you can preview what it looks like in the viewer panel just like with the transitions. Let's see. I want to use this binoculars effect. Just click and drag it to the clip you want and there you go. That was very easy. Now if you select the clip where the binoculars effect is applied you can actually head over to the inspector panel again and under the effect step you can make some cool adjustments. For example the blur strength slider or some aberration strength and distance to make the binoculars look a bit older. Some edge blur and some mask blur. This all looks so cool. With the eye height you can even make it look like real eyes opening and closing. That looks really cool right? Now let's add some music to our beautiful video. I have a song in my media pool. Just drag it from the media pool onto the audio track. You can also trim your audio clips by the way. So let's trim the music until it fits my edit. To change the volume of this song, you can just click and drag this line in the middle to make it sound louder or more quiet. There you go. Now, if you're done editing your video, you want to save it of course. We're going to turn all these clips from the timeline into one finished video file. And to do that, head over to the deliver page. You might have already seen the deliver page logo somewhere. Anyway, in this page you can review your video in the timeline to see if everything is how you want it. As you can see, the entire timeline is selected for exporting. If you only want to save a part of this video, you can use these grey into out points to make a selection in your timeline. Of course we don't want that, so let's go back to the menu and choose entire timeline. There you go. Now on the left you can see all of these render settings, but don't worry too much about them. DaVinci Resolve has some really good presets you can use. For example, if you want to upload this video to YouTube, just go to the top render presets and scroll until you find the option for YouTube. And here you can even choose for Full HD or 4K. If you have it selected, you can still make adjustments in the export panel. But that's not needed today. You can give it a name, for example my first video, and then browse to a location on your computer to save it. Next, click on Add to Render Queue. That will add this project to the render queue panel on the right. All you gotta do now is click on Render All and wait until it's done you will now find a polished video file that you can play back, upload to YouTube or send to your friends. There you go guys. I really hope this video helped you out. Definitely play around with DaVinci Resolve as much as you can. And of course, don't forget to check out the DaVinci Resolve for beginners course right here on my left. Remember, the first 50 to use the code FIRST will get 50% off. Thank you guys so much for watching.